Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Jahan. In case you're new, in this particular pick a card reading, we're going to be getting some tips on how to plan, manage, and grow your business, whether you already are an existing business owner, or if you're looking to start your own business, hopefully these tips um, can help you out in your endeavors. I'm going to be using the success cards deck by John Uke, or John Uke. Forgive my ignorance if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, but we're going to take a look at um, what you can do to grow, manage, and plan your business successfully. So I have three options today for you guys to select from. Pick whichever option you feel the most drawn to as per usual. Ignore what you feel doesn't apply to you or your specific situation. Remember, these are general messages on YouTube. Um, and also, I was about to say something else, but it escaped my mind. It'll come back to me. So anyways, we have option number one, which is the green diamond. All right, we have option number two for the iridescent diamond. And then last but not least, we have option number three for the blue diamond. All right, so take what you feel resonates for you and your situation, ignore the rest, and then um, I hope you guys enjoy your reading. All right, so jumping in, for those of you drawn to the green diamond, intuitively, I feel like your business has the potential to make a whole lot of money because, like, you know, this is giving me seeing green money energy, right? So I'm just picking up, like, either you're going to make a lot of money, either you're already making a lot of money, you're going to be making more, or your business, like I said, has the potential to make a lot of money and make you very wealthy. I'm also picking up, you know, green is associated with the heart chakra, so you're meant to do something that your heart loves, something that you enjoy. You're meant to make money doing something that you absolutely love. Some of you, I'm even picking up on like turning a hobby into a business kind of energy. So let's take a look at some tips for you to grow your business. This is a very big deck. <laughs> so bear with me as I shuffle. I'm sorry if you can hear a dog barking in the background. I have my window open. But let's take a look at what you can do to grow your business. Ooh, success almost came out. So yeah, some of you guys, you're meant to have a very successful business. Or your business has the potential to be very successful. Whew, yeah, this is a thick deck. 101 cards. And it's like really big, so no joke. <laughs> okay, so first and foremost, we have copyright coming out, number 42. Copyright, copyright, still ideas, still facts, but do not still words. And this is coming from Dan Pointner, Pointer, author and speaker. I probably mispronounced his name. But it says copyright is a form of automatic protection of creative work usually lasting 50 to 100 years research for more details on what is copyrightable but then use a c alongside the year of creation to protect your intellectual property all right so some of you guys you make you need to make sure that you're, you're protecting your intellectual property by you know copywriting it putting a trademark on it so that people are not stealing your ideas and plagiarizing Questions that you need to ask yourself in regards to this is, what have, uh, what have you produced that is copyrightable? And two, have you used an online tool to make sure you haven't accidentally copied anybody else's work? So some of you guys, you need to be very, very diligent um, with that. Because sometimes you can, it can even happen by accident, right? So make sure you're crossing all of your T's and dotting your I's. So that you're not stealing other people's intellectual property and also so that nobody is stealing or copying your ideas as well. Some of you guys with number 51, you need to get a little bit better with your social media marketing. Seth Godin, who is an author, said, build it and they will come. Only works in the movies. Social media is a build it, nurture it, engage them and they may come and stay. It says, great content requires obsessively focusing on the viewer. Consider shareability alongside relevant calls to action to further your goals. Use a management tool to aggregate accounts, recommend keywords, schedule posts, 
and report engagement to save time while improving performance. And some questions that you need to go over with yourself is what content sparks your customer's interest and how can you tie in your business? What is trending and what are your competitors doing? Which influencers are most relevant to approach and what is the highest performing platforms to focus on? All right. So make sure you're like getting your business out there in front of potential customers through social media, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat is not a bad idea. Let's get two more. Oh, wait, did I put that back in the deck? I was supposed to leave it out. We have customer, okay, perfect, we have two. Customer service and target market. So some of you guys, you really need to focus on a niche, focus on your target market, the kind of people you wanna to attract to your business and your customer service. Overall energy number 34, business to business selling. That's crazy, I used to work in a call center and I worked in business to business, B2B. It says the most important thing about selling to another business is finding the person with the most pain around the problem your solution solve. Um, this is from Brent Meredith, tech sales executive. Use a CR CRM system or document for lead tracking. Identify key decision makers and convert an internal evangelist to lobby your deal. Introducing a small, simple deal first makes it, makes it easier to upgrade them later. You will need many meetings and each with a clear objective for what the next touch will be. Follow up within 24 hours with thanks, a summary and action items. So some questions you can ask yourself is, what is your competition selling to your target? What is your decision-making process, time frame, and budget? And how can you systemize and scale messaging and follow-ups? All right. So maybe this can also represent collaborations as well, collaborating with other businesses like your own. Maybe some of you guys, you're meant to have a business or you're, you have a business where you cater to other businesses, for example. It's almost like the analogy I'm picking up is like selling shovels and like equipment for mining to like um, to miners. You know what I mean? You know how like I don't mean miners and like as in like children. I mean like miners, like the people that did gold. Like because when you think of like the gold rush, a lot of people didn't make money through mining gold, but they made money selling equipment to the people that were mining for gold, if that makes sense. Number 23, your target market. It's hard to connect to everyone. A generic message doesn't appeal to anyone. And this is coming from virtuallinda.com. Your target market has specific needs that will inform what kind of marketing content you should make, how to present it, and where. Go deep. It helps to imagine speaking to one specific person. Which group is most excited about your offering? Is there a gap in the target market for comp competition where you excel? And what are the demographics and psychographics of this group? And then customer service. Few things generate more goodwill and repeat business than being effortless to deal with. Coming from Matt Watkinson, who is an author and speaker. Enable your customers pre and post purchase with all the information they need via frequently asked questions, manuals, videos, and tutorials. Look out for opportunities to provide delightful experiences along the way and involve all departments and customer service to boost their understanding of your product and customers. So some questions that you can ask yourself is what are all the ways your customers might need service? How can you reduce those needs then make what's left as easy as possible for them? And how can you automate and systemize those services to consistently take time for all involved? All right. So this is what I'm picking up, some quick tips on what your business may need right now in order to grow and be successful. I hope this gave you some clarity or at the very least helped you out. Um, I'm going to end it here. I do offer business readings on my website if you're interested to see what your business needs and the potential future of your business. www.johantoshop.com is my website in the description box. Other than that, infinite abundance as always. And I wish you all the very lit. <laughs> all the very I want to say good luck and all the very best at the same time so all the very best of luck on your business journey until next time bye all right number two if you're drawn to this beautiful iridescent diamond intuitively I'm picking up you need to make your business pop more. Maybe some of you guys, you need to do some rebranding. Um, some of you guys, I'm picking up on like marketing 
if you were drawn to option number one which is a green diamond maybe check that out as well um some of you guys i'm also picking up like something about aesthetics again making your making sure your business looks good making sure that it's attracting um, or it's attracted to the eye that it's catchy using colors, bright colors that attract people. Um, some of you guys, I'm also picking up either you're meant to have a business like this or you're going to, or you already have a business where you deal with fashion, beauty products, hair, makeup, nails, um, or something to do with aesthetics and beauty is what I'm picking up. All right. So let's take a look at some messages for you. Okay, so we have wisdom coming out. We have not even to risk the adventure alone, for the heroes of all time have gone before us. The labyrinth is truly known. We have only to follow the thread of the hero path. Joseph Campbell. Failure burns, but it's not failure if you learn from it. It breeds perseverance. It teaches, it motivates, it humbles. Fail early and repeat until you get it right. All right. So some of you guys, maybe you've already tried certain business ventures and they didn't work. You maybe you felt like a failure in the past or now, or maybe this may even happen in the future. But don't give up. Keep trying. Right. Some questions to ask yourself about this is what is your attitude towards failure? Where have you failed in this and past ventures? Are there patterns? What can you learn from your failures and do differently? And who has a similar personality or business model to yours that you can learn from? All right, so you need to approach um, any business situation with wisdom, right? I'm hearing like take your emotions out of it. It's not personal. Look at things logically as it pertains to your business ventures or venture. And then we have number 11, your story. Nothing sticks in your head better than a story. Stories can express the most complicated ideas in a digestible way. Sam Balter, Senior Marketing Manager at HubSpot. The point of your story isn't to explain the past, but to paint a compelling vision of your future. Telling the pure truth isn't usually as effective. So some questions to ask yourself about this is what part of your story most relates to what you're bringing into the world and why? And how can you change the focus and order of elements to make your story more effective? So some of you guys, you need to come up with a compelling mission story for your business. Why are you doing what you're doing? Who is your ideal kind of client or customer? what you're wishing to achieve what is your ultimate objective and outcome with your service or your business let's get some more i'll get two more perfect yeah that's crazy oh my god i just said that mission and vision statements I love confirmation. Having a good product and building a thriving community focused on a set of core values and celebrating transformation was how we built Quest Nutrition. This is from Tom Bilyeu from Quest Nutrition and Impact Theory. Improve your mileage with a clear, defined mission and vision. Management is more effective when everybody understands where they are going and why. People tend to put in more effort when they care about the vision, and your customers will love you. So some questions to focus on in, in regards to your mission statement is, what are the aims and values of your business? What are your current and future objectives? And where can you internally and externally share these cornerstones? I literally just said that. So you see it yourself, double confirmation. The best writers in Hollywood couldn't even write this shit. You know what I mean? You've seen it yourself. We have specials. Maybe some of you guys, you need to run specials. Two for one, 50% off, 20% 20, 20 off. Speaking of which, I have $15 um, off any reading for the month of April on my website if you're interested in your very own business reading where we take a look at how you can grow, manage, and successfully plan your business or grow your business as well as the potential future for your business and yourself. So check that out, www.johantaroshop.com. Links are in the description box. But anyways, special deal, limited time offer, ev everyone, ever, right? Consider running promotions during high slash low seasons, holiday or events to old inventory, or even as a constant incentive to buy. Options include buy one, get one free, two for one, subscription discounts, additional throw-ins, joint promotions, coupons for the next purchase, cash back, free shipping returns, free trials, and loyalty programs. You can reward them for activities like sharing on social media or referring friends or provide them to 
niche audiences like students or veterans. So some questions to ask yourself, what kind of promotions make sense for you and when? Where can you promote them? And after experimenting, which are the most effective? So experiment with some promotions and specials, and this will help you grow um, your business. And then overall energy, it says A-B testing. So I was just, I literally just said the word experimenting, which is giving testing. So test things out. Test things out for a few weeks, a few months, see how it does. If it does well, implement it into your business permanently. And if it doesn't, try something else, right? Assumptions can subsist on a foundation of quickstand. This is from Stephen Redhead, consultant and author. Make better decisions by forming tests, swapping out a variable while holding everything else constant. This can include names, marketing, marketing messages, logos, calls to action, button colors and locations, price optimization, and so much more. So some questions to go over with yourself are, which decisions are you facing that can be A-B tested? Which decisions have you made that may have better alternatives? And C, how can you test and measure results with different audiences? All right, so that's what I'm picking up for you guys. Um, my intuition is telling me one more, so I'm going to pull one more. You have market research. Look before you leap. This is from John Hayward, who is, in his, who is a historian and author. This is the first step when determining whether to go forward with a business idea is the easiest and most overlooked. Look, Google it. Bonus points for asking experts. One, have you checked lately if your product exists else, elsewhere? B or two, if it doesn't, why hasn't it been done? Why haven't you heard of it or why have others failed? And three, if it exists, what can you do better or be different? All right. So do some market research, do some testings, um, run specials, focus or create a mission and vision statement for your business and apply and apply wisdom and logic to what you're doing as it pertains to your business. All right. So hopefully this gave you some clarity. This inspired you. I'm wishing you all the very best on your business journeys. Infinite abundance as always. And you guys will see me in your next reading. Bye. All right. Last but not least, if you're drawn to the blue option, intuitively I'm picking up you're meant to do some, either you already do this or you're meant to have a business that involves speaking, public speaking in some capacity. Um, for others of you, maybe there's a need for you to talk more about your business. I'm also picking up word of mouth. Word of mouth is going to be golden for your business. Through word of mouth, you're going to be able to attract a lot of clients and uh, clients, customers and clientele is what I'm picking up. Because, you know, blue is associated with the throat chakra. So it's all about speech and communication. I'm hearing don't sell yourself short. I'm also picking up to attract your ideal client. Let it be known up front what your ideal client looks like. You know what I mean? Um, and this is how you'll be able to attract your ideal client. Okay. Yeah, so just I was just saying something about speaking, and you have the little speaker, and you have videos with the YouTube logo. So some of you guys, you could already be YouTube content creators, or you're meant to get on YouTube to kind of like, you know, to market your product. Like I always say, whether you know, realize this or not, my tarot videos, for example, they're low-key samples, you know. Yes, a lot of people, you watch them, you get them for free. But the main objective for my YouTube channel is to attract clients, right? It's not really targeted to people that just want to watch a bunch of free readings all day. No, these are samples so that you can see if you resonate with my reading so that you can order from me, right? So, you know, some of you guys, whether you do tarot or psychic readings or whatever, regardless of whatever kind of product you have, you'll benefit from really showcasing and talk about, talking about your product via social media, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. You know, if you sell hair, for example, get on there and teach them how, how you curl one of your units. You know, if you have a car business, talk about your car business, you know, maybe do a life in the day at your shop, your car shop, do it on YouTube so people can see. And regardless of whatever business you have, the point I'm trying to make is get on YouTube and market your business. It's a great tool, right? It's free. And sometimes you can even make extra money if granted, if you get views through um, ad revenue. 
It says, when asked how how they'd most like to learn about a product or service, two-thirds of people, which is 66%, said they prefer to watch a short video. So maybe some of you guys, you need to create some short videos. Now we have YouTube shorts or even TikTok, right? Nowadays, our society, their attention span is so so short, right? So put it in a short video. Make Come up with your little commercial short videos and put them on YouTube. And I don't mean like little video in a demeaning way. I mean like literally like a short little video, 15 to 60 seconds showcasing what you have to offer. And this comes from WowZoo. I'm probably saying that wrong, 2020. It says videos are more engaging, immersive, and shareable than text. Have a clear objective behind each video. Search current best practice for practices for length and frequency depending on the platform so some questions you can ask yourself are which videos are relevant landing page expl explainer sales tutorials advertising content vlogging announcement missions live streams can you verify demand before filming and do you have high quality video and audio are you widely promoting your videos all right so we have video coming out we have hiring when employees really care about the purpose of your mission, they just naturally care more about everything about de about the details. Jason Cytron from Discord. So each new head drastically increases communication and management overhead. So hire slowly and carefully. People in the most positions care more about value, significance, growth, and lifestyle than salary. So consciously sell those benefits too. So some of you guys, like if you have a business where you have to hire a team, this could be relevant for you. Who do you need most right now? What is the personality psychology of the person who will best fit this role? And how do they take in and respond to information? Do they know the illegal interview questions? And how can you show you care about their well-being and desired, desired career development? Um, there's a famous saying from, you know, the guy that Princess Diana was with, I believe his name is Fayad, Dodi Fayad or something. He was, he's the, or he was the owner of, of Harold's or Harold's, whatever it's called in the UK. And he said that if you treat your customers well, they'll, they'll treat you, like if you treat your employees well, they'll treat your customers well, right? That kind of energy. So, you know, is this something that you can offer to potential employees that you're going to be bringing on your team and how can you convey that you know but yeah some of you guys not all of you but some of you guys this may be relevant like i said these are general messages so if it doesn't apply let it fly overall energy we have trademark so what option was that i believe it could have been option number one if you were drawn to option number one the green diamond i would watch that as well it says every trademark you build adds to the financial value of your business much more than your tangible assets by Kayan C. Kankanala, author and attorney. I'm probably butchering these names, but that's not the point. It says trademarks identify the brand owner of a product or service. Registering one protects you from getting copied. Though in many countries, all unregistered trademarks or service marks is still defensible in certain jurisdictions. So some of you guys, you need to make sure that you're, you know, um, trademarking your stuff so that nobody's stealing your ideas and copying you, right? Have you added trademark symbols to your logo or brand? Have you formally registered your trademarks or trademark? Or have you considered licensing, licensing your brand for others to use? My intuition is telling me one more from this, so I'll pull a card from here. We have systemization. The leader's role is first to see the wheels of the machine, then get those wheels turning with maximum efficiency from Sam Carpenter, work the system. Systems are everywhere. Inspect them across your business and personal life and think how to consistently ensure their efficiency, including fail saves, documentation, delegation, and autom automation. Saving time and staying in the distraction-free flow state are key. Approach the biggest opportunities first, but remember most progress actually comes from many 1% improvements. So what are you doing yourself that someone else can do? What are you best at and where can you spend your time more effectively or most effectively? Which processes are the most chaotic or require the most labor? And are your systems documented and accessible to ensure consistent ex execution? So you can ask yourself that. Let's get one more. I'm 
also picking up some of you guys, you can even hire somebody to make videos for you, for your the kind of um, videos that you make. You can hire an editor. You can hire somebody who does voiceovers for some of you. We have publicity. So again, it goes back to the video making, getting your name and brand out there. It says, next, thing, next to doing the right thing, the most important thing is letting people know you're doing the right thing. This comes from John D. Rockefeller from Business Magnate. PR is about getting attention for your company. Nobody actually cares about your company. So keep your press release concise and focused on the audience. A short headline, hook, and image are key. Prom makes exclusives to increase your odds of getting picked up or embargoes to get news released at once. So what news sources, big and small, do your customers follow? Do you have any novel insights to share? How can you keep tabs on current trends or new discoveries that you can tie to your business? And how can you build and foster relationships with journalists? So maybe some of you guys with this publicity, maybe you can go on a podcast. If you get offered to be interviewed, do it. That way, it'll attract more people to your business. Some of you guys, it may be time for you to pivot. It says changing your mind should be something admirable, not embarrassing. Mark Manso, this is from Mind F Monday newsletter. In case of a fire, pivot. If what you're doing fundamentally isn't working or something tangential could be working better, then change your strategy. Most successful companies pivoted at least once in their lifetime. So maybe if you're doing something and you're not getting the outcome that you want or the payoff that you want, it's okay to change. Is your current strategy working or is it time to give up on it? Are you thriving in your current environment? Where can you find better opportunities and where else do you have unfair advantages you could carry over? How can you test before committing? You guys got a lot. And then last but not least, we have acceleration programs. Accelerators are programs intended to accelerate the development of early stage companies or ideas. Tobias Stone, entrepreneur and angel investor. Accelerators offer men mentorships, connections, and up to 200K in exchange for 3 to 7% of your company. A great, deal of, a great deal for entrepreneurs. Some accept applications with just ideas. Most expect market traction and an innovative product. Are you okay with having an institutional stakeholder? Are you planning to sell, IPO your business? And what are the prestigious local and niche accelerators relevant to you? Do they fulfill your needs? So maybe some of you guys, it'll benefit you to look into acceleration programs. Or maybe even look into getting some sort of mentorship or even like an investor will benefit you as well for some of you. Again, if it doesn't apply, let it fly. And then overall energy, accessibility. Accessibility drives traffic and growth in technology. That's a proven trend in technology. This comes from Sean Plott, esports communicator or commentator, excuse me, esports commentator and game designer. If you want to reach a broader audience, you have to cater to everyone's needs. So again, speaking of broader audience, this is double confirmation for the videos. Businesses with accessibility features have a major advantage over competitors. Accessibility creates more efficient designs, protects human and civil rights, meets legal obligations, and gains you more customers. Account for edge cases like color blindness and language barrier. Is your product or service accessible and inclusive? And how can you make your business more accessible? Discovery, onboarding, tutorials, usage, support, and special needs. All right, so is your company, is your business, is the product that you offer, is it accessible? And again, speaking of publicity and videos, we have SEO, which is search engine optimization. The best place to hide a dead body is on the second page of Google from Brian Dean from Backlinko. Search engine rankings have gotten hard to hack. The main strategy now is to be the biggest, best, and most relevant, but there are still many useful optimizations you can make beyond registering on dictionaries or directories. Um, also consider app stores if relevant. So are you using tools to seek out popular and niche search terms to include on your landing page? Are you blogging about them? Publishing great articles with backlinks to your websites or website? Have you optimized your test images, mobile formatting and submitted a sitemap to Google? So some of you guys, maybe you need to work on, um, your SEO, if you don't know how to do this, maybe do some research so you can do it yourself. Or with this hiring, you can hire someone to do it for you. With this publicity, with this hiring, maybe you can hire... Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I guess I got to read it because I accidentally did that. It says advertising. So speaking of advertising, maybe you can hire 
or pay somebody to run ads for you, for example. Maybe you can even do this through Google. Make it simple. Make it memorable. Make it inviting to look at. Make it fun to read, right? Leo Burnett, Leo Burnett Company, INC. Advertise when the lifetime value of a customer is higher than the cost to acquire them. Track conversion rates when possible or hold other advertising stables when experimenting with untrackable mass advertising. Retargeting is a key as consumers, consumers typically purchase after their seventh product encounter. Have you tested different advertising mediums, platforms, and messaging? So again, you can hire Pay somebody to run your ad on their podcast, on their videos, through sponsorships even, right? At what budget can you maximize value before diminishing returns kick in? So make sure you have the budget for that. You Ultimately, you don't want to spend a ton of money for advertising and you're not getting any profit, right? And come up with an exit strategy. People with goals succeed because they know where they are going. Earl Nightingale, who is a radio speaker and author, keep in mind your desired business outcome when making decisions. Investors want to get their money back, usually by selling your company or going public. The price is often five to ten times your annual revenue, but can vary depending on the business type. So are you building a business for a lifestyle? Is it for a passive income or is it to sell or to take to, take to the public? What exits have other businesses made that can be comparable to yours in the future? And then what decisions should you alter based on exit timing? So some of you guys, you know, maybe you don't want to be doing something long term. Come up with an exit strategy. I know a lot of people, they build businesses up and they sell them, right? So how does that look like for you? Is that an option for you? What is your ultimate objective and outcome? What is the ideal plan you have for your business? Is this something that you want long term as a lifestyle? Is this going to serve as passive income for you? Um, are you planning to sell it or take it public? Like come up with an exit strategy, all right? So I'll end it here because I feel like I'm getting long-winded. Um, hopefully this gave you some clarity, some tips. I wish you all the very luck um, on your business journeys. If you're interested in your very own business reading like this to see how you can make your business succeed, check out my website, www.johantaroshop.com, where we're going to take a look at what you can do to potentially grow your business and the also and also the potential future of not just your business but you as well okay so i'll end it here infinite abundance as always and as for usual you'll see me in your next one bye